Hello there and welcome back to Grand Prix World. I'm super sorry that we haven't had any videos for a while. Um, it's just been over a week, I think. Um, things have been crazy busy over on this side. Um, obviously the main reason you didn't get a video over the weekend was um, I was as saddened as I'm sure all of you were to hear of the death of uh, Antoine Hubert, uh, Formula 2 driver, in what is quite possibly one of the uh, nastiest accidents I've ever seen. Um, so obviously over the weekend it somehow didn't feel particularly appropriate. I'm not going to pretend I was a huge Uber fan, but um, we are all fans of motorsport and uh, the loss of anybody is is tragic, to be frank. Um, so I just, uh, I didn't feel kind of appropriate putting a video out then. Um, and the week before I was finishing up a big project I've been working on for like nine years, uh, putting together uh, family history and DNA testing nonsense and stuff uh, for my dad. So um, I was nerding out a bit. On the upside, I did start putting together a new um, a new setup. So I have a new machine and I have another new machine coming at some point. And uh, that should allow us a bit more freedom to, um, to make some new content. On top of that, I want to just take a moment to thank everybody who took part in the viewer survey uh, I sent around super 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 helpful feedback and way more responses than I was expecting so um, I really do appreciate that kind of um, some mixed messages coming through in the results but by and large I think we're all on the same page that's really cool and I've, I've taken some time to kind of think about how we um, how we go forward from from there but it's very helpful to have a bit of guidance from you guys to figure out what you like what you don't like and, and we can go from there Right, this is a make-or-break season for us in the Tour playthrough. As you have noticed, no doubt, the numbers in our balance sheet are red, which is not good. It's extra not good because we've already taken a loan and we cannot take out another. Um, don't crash on me, game. So, as you can see, already have um, a loan taken out cannot take out another one. We have no equity in the team to safely sell. Um, so we're relying on the fact that we're going to hopefully be turning a profit after each Grand Prix because we are earning that much more money now than we were previously. Uh, that said, if we don't earn enough money to cover our race expenses and this negative sum, then it's going to be game over. Um, Entirely possible. If that happens, we'll obviously start a new playthrough, but uh, that's entirely possible. And sometimes, you know, the cards just go that way for you. Um, frankly, I was a little bit surprised that we made it to year three, given how fine we cut it last time. Anyway, without further ado, uh, let's jump into what is your 2000 um, pre-season special. So, um, Let's take a look at our car, first of all. I'm going to try and tweak the format a little bit. So, here we are. Uh, Zepta are our title sponsor, so officially we would be uh, Zepta Tyrrell Mugen Honda, which is a bit of a <laughs> bit of a mouthful. Um, we also have Komatsu, Kanalplu and Hewlett Packard uh, beefing up the budget. Um, then we obviously have our partnership What I was going to say before I was so rudely interrupted by the game crashing uh, is that we um, we still have a partnership deal with Mugen Honda. Uh, we have, uh, I believe, we're on customer deals for tyres and race fuels and lubricants, which is bad news. Uh, you may also notice that there's a bug with the game still that um, it's showing last year's livery. Um, but you know we'll figure we'll figure it out. It will correct itself uh, for next year. Uh, the only deals in place, and that livery is more accurate now, is Komatsu, Kanoplu, and Hewlett Packard, which does help us out quite a bit. In terms of our power unit, uh, so the Spec One 2000 uh, V10 unit from Mugen Honda, um, a little low on power. Well, yeah, quite low on power. Probably uh, one of the weaker engines on the grid in terms of power. Reliability and responsiveness are not great either. Um, is quite heat resistant though. Fairly good on fuel consumption. Uh, 
rigidly built and a reasonably light power unit. Not the lightest, but it will do. Uh, our tyres are distinctly middle of the road. Um, but again, that's not terrible. We just don't want anything too bad. And we've got the most vanilla of um, race fuels possible, which is um, half full on both bars. But again, at least we know um, everything's at least average. Now, the problem we have is we may not have enough money to build new cars next year. So, um, what we've got to hope for is that the regulations don't change year on year and then we can get away without building any new cars. But we will see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Looking at technology, uh, we have a serious reliability problem on the hydraulic system. And um, I want to also say, actually, the rest isn't too bad, but that's not true. So uh, the clutch has performance issues, uh, the brakes have reliability trouble, and we have performance and reliability uh, trouble on the acceleration system, uh, well, the throttle system. Um, no driver aids completed, and everything is going into what could potentially be next year's car, we will see. Um, can cam systems are still the only... Uh, the only uh, expansions we have to the factory. I'm sorry, I forgot how to brain that. And Toro Takagi and Shinji Nakano continue to be our drivers. Uh, their last seasons are next year. Celso Moriera is in his last season with the team. Um, moving over, uh, we have to replace our designer. Our designer only, actually, uh, this year, in terms of dep departmental heads. Um, we will see who we can pick up maybe a little later. Um, Sasaki still won't talk to us because we fired him. There's not really... There's not really much attractive options out there aside from the classic Mike Gascoigne, uh, 252,000, but we are banned from taking Mike Gascoigne by the rules of the playthrough. Um, Mike, I miss you. You complete me. So, pre-season review. Let's take uh, a cheeky look at what's going on uh, with the other teams. If I can remember where everything is, it's here. That's interesting. Why does it not show legacy information? That's a bug as well. That's not happened before. Okay, never mind. Oh, there we go. So uh, last season's uh, driver's champion was David Coulthard. On a measly 78 points, it was actually a really closely fought uh, 1999 driver's championship. In terms of the constructors, Ferrari took the honours last year, um, stealing the title away from McLaren, who had a, a fairly mixed season. Let's take a look at who's driving for who, shall we? Just to bring us up to date on the driver lineups. So, at Arrows, uh, they've retained Eddie Irvine and Mika Salo as joint number ones. Uh, they had a really, really good season last year, and I'm expecting uh, big results from them again this year. Benetton have uh, Patrick Rainbow uh, and Alexander Wurtz stays with the team. They're both signed up till 2002. Meanwhile, down at Ferrari... Um, I'm ignoring test drivers, by the way. Damon Hill and Johnny Newhouse are uh, remain partners for one more season. Again, joint number ones. Uh, Hill had a really, really strong season last year, despite Ferrari's shortcomings. Uh, Johnny Newhouse kind of underperformed for my money. Jordan, another strong shower last time out. Uh, Olivier Panis is their number one, and uh, Giancarlo Fisichella supports him in a driver two role. Over at McLaren, it's uh, Deniz and Coulthard. Deniz in the last year of his contract, actually. Meanwhile, Minardi are fielding Ricardo Rossi again in the last year of his contract. And Jano Trulli, who has uh, another season to run. Over at Prost, it's Heinz Helfrenzen and Ralph Schumacher still. Uh, that's a, a lineup retained from last season as well. Sauber are fielding Rubens Barrichello until 2003. And Jano Lacy will be his partner for this year. Down at Stewart, it's Johnny Herbert, supported by Stefan Sarazam, one of the few teams to maintain a 1-2 driver role. 
Uh, at Tyrrell, obviously, we have Shinji Nakano and Toru Takagi, and Williams are fielding Mika Hakkinen, supported by Esteban Tuero. In terms of unsigned drivers, um, the big one is Michael Schumacher, who has retired. Uh, now, what I'm looking for here is if there's a pay driver on the market who could save the team. There he is, Dario Loretti. Um, he could technically save the team. <laughs> the problem we have is that we have Takagi and Nakano under contract for another year. Um, probably best to wait uh, with that consideration. Moving onwards, let's see who's running what gear, shall we, shall we not? So, uh, team sponsors, uh, we don't normally cover, but we'll give a quick rundown. Uh, the big three, um, East, Murano and Winfried, are with Jordan, McLaren and Williams, respectively. So we know Jordan have a very strong budget coming into the year. Playlife have stayed with Benetton. Uh, Gulois Blondes are with uh, Sauber. Prost uh, have picked up a deal with Buzzing Hornets. And Red Bull are sponsoring Ferrari. Uh, not sure why, but fair enough. In terms of engines, let's take a look here. So, and we I should actually stay here so we can see who's got works and who hasn't. Uh, Mercedes-Benz have two works partners this year, Williams and McLaren. Jordan have a partnership deal, which I don't think will set them back too badly, actually. Meanwhile, Ferrari power uh, sits in the back of Stewart and Minardi, who both have works contracts. Peugeot are off the grid this year, no supplies from them. Mugen Honda are powering ourselves. Ferrari are running works Ford Power uh, with Prost and Sauber on partner contracts. Benetton have uh, partnered with Mechachrome as a customer and uh, Hart are powering Arrows as a customer, which actually means I have to revise my view on Arrows for this season. Um, in terms of uh, engines, we are trying to go back to Mugen Honda as per the rules of the playthrough. Uh, now, tyres. Um, works Bridgestone Supply for Benetton, uh, while Prost have a partnership deal. We are a customer, and Stewart pick up the second works deal. Uh, the Goodyear works deals go to Williams and Ferrari, with Sauber and McLaren as partners, Minardi and Arrows as customers, alongside Jordan. Over on the fuel side, uh, Williams and Ferrari have uh, works deals apiece with Shell. Uh, Mobile One of What? Hmm. I've never seen that before. I haven't seen that before. Um, what I'm noticing is, first of all, no one's picked up the works deal with Mobile One. So Minardi only have a partnership, but also Texaco's um, stats have changed, I believe. They've become more attractive. I didn't realize that happened. Oh, there we go. Um, Texaco uh, have a customer supply deal with Arrows. Agip have a, a customer supply deal with Prost and a partnership deal with Stewart. Total have a, a partnership deal with Jordan and Sauber. We have a customer arrangement with Repsol, Petrobras, uh, no one cares for. Meanwhile, down at Elf, it's a customer supply for McLaren and a partnership deal for Benetton. Let's take a look at the fuels. Um, now, if you're talking all out power, then Agip seems to be the one to have, whereas Elf are the easiest on the engine. In terms of the work suppliers, um, Mobile One and Shell are actually very, very evenly matched. Uh, you'll notice they're not actually the best fuels available right now. Obviously, you offset that somewhat by um, by being able to uh, develop them yourselves with a works contract. Uh, others that look interesting, Texaco and Total, depending on your needs. But I'd actually say Repsol, for us, is the best partner to have. Uh, it's just unfortunate we can't get a partnership deal. Uh, tires we've already checked. Let's take a look at power units, how we stack up. Um, so Mercedes continue to dominate uh, the power charts, although their gap has been slashed to a mere two points ahead of Ferrari. Ferrari, meanwhile, have strengths everywhere else. So out of the two, the big two, I would say Ferrari definitely have the better units this year. Minardi are going to uh, be very, very happy with that work supply, I have to say. Meanwhile, Peugeot also putting out great units that no one's using. 
Uh, Mugen Honda distinctly middle of the road, although more powerful and reliable than the Ford units used by Ferrari, Prost and Sauber, so it's not all bad. Mechachrome uh, actually have some great units this year, although still continue to suffer from rigidity problems which can have knock-on reliability effects. Uh, and the heart units from Arrows are actually very, very comparable to the Ford units. The Ford units are lighter, but the heart units are um, superior on fuel consumption. Yeah, Arrows might do all right, actually, compared to the Ford-powered teams. It's all to play for. It really is all to play for. Right. Um, we're not negotiating for fuel right now. We are trying to open negotiations with Red Bull. Um, I'm going to take 10% off there, and um, what I will do is test the water with with Goodyear. Um, and I'll take some off the Bridgestone deal as well, and let's see if we can't talk to... Um, To Ford and Puget because the deal is like the aim was to see how far we get with a partner engine deal but I suspect we may have to revise that view um, simply because we desperately need the cash unless we get a works deal from um, from elsewhere uh, we're talking to Castrol for the cash monies it's all about those Benjamins the game is still lagging on me, but it's all right. We'll survive. Uh, I'm going to open talks with Magneti Morelli as well about a sponsorship deal because I like them. They have a good name. Right. We'll be running no testing. We cannot afford the test. Um, likewise, I'm building nothing. I'm touching nothing. We just have to see where we stack up, first of all, and we have to see uh, how much money we do or do not make. This could be uh, the last race of this playthrough. So, uh, brown trousers time, everybody. Uh, I'm not negotiating with anybody. I'm not wasting time with anything else. Um, we should actually get more money in general because uh, we should be getting uh, more money from the FIA for our improved constructors uh, position. Um, let's see. Oh, it's not told us. Okay, well, I guess we just have to risk it for the biscuit, as they say. Um, both drivers I'm turning right down, keeping the wear off until we know where we are. I mean, if, if we run this and we come out of it like 70 grand up, then, you know, we're going to be all right because it's a flyaway race. It's expensive. Um, I'm going to keep the hard soft split, even though actually the soft tire doesn't look so great, really. Everything else is set up as we want. Welcome to Australia, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, David Coulthard sits atop the uh, the running list, being uh, the bearer of the number one this year. 21 degrees and very dry for qualifying the first round of the season. Let's see how we do. Ooh, not good. Uh, we are dead last. Um, we're too tense with Takagi off the back of Frenson. I had a feeling this would happen because the design for last year's car was rubbish. Uh, meanwhile, at the top, Arrows take a 1-2. <laughs> Mikasalo leading home uh, Eddie Irvine um, by a fraction of a fraction of a second. Uh, Giancarlo Fisichello leading up the second row of the grid. Uh, Mika Hakkinen keeps him company. Uh, Olivier Panis uh, takes fifth for Jordan, and David Coulthard takes sixth for McLaren. Bit of a poor showing for the reigning champion. Not as poor as our showing, but again, we aren't pushing with the drivers, and we're, we're in the 133s, which means we're in the fight up to 15th. After that, everyone's about two seconds, three seconds clear. That's not going to be a gap we're going to close this year. 29 degrees and cloudy for race day. I'm going to, uh, of course, one stop, Tora T, which is actually a fairly good rap name. Um, he could have been in the Wu-Tang Clan if only circumstances were different. Right, boys, let's see if we've got race pace of any description. We do not. In fact, we haven't even finished. 
engine failure on both our cars. That is definitely not a good sign because we can't afford to repair them. Uh, quite a lot of attrition actually in that race. Uh, we lost Fisichella, Barrichello, the Arrows, both Arrows cars actually after a fantastic qualifying uh, failed to make the finish. Both Williams also failing to make it to the flag. Who did that allow to win then? Damon Hill for Ferrari uh, takes the first win of the season, a 132.12.576 for him. The podium is completed by David Coulthard and Olivier Panis in the McLaren and the Jordan. Both Ferraris and both McLarens in the points there, with Deniz and Newhouse taking fourth and fifth. And the last point goes to Ricardo Rossi in the Ferrari works powered Minardi. So, spicy. Uh, so obviously the standings for the championship and uh, the constructors are exactly as you would imagine. We have made a healthy profit. We are not out of this yet. <laughs> That's fantastic news. That's really, really great news. It's just unfortunate we have a really shitty car. A really shitty car. Um, yeah, we didn't run any testing. We're not going to run any testing for the first few rounds of the season. What we are going to do is, um, <clears throat> this tells me we should we should be okay to build new cars, which is good because um, we're going to fucking need them. <laughs> we're really going to need them. Um, okay, I'm feeling a bit more confident now. I was really worried coming into this. So, what are our next steps? First of all, uh, we're going to try and get ourselves a better designer for next year. Uh, Loic Bigois may be a decent option uh, if the game doesn't crash. Davis, Gavin Fisher's way overpriced. Rory Byrne is totally out of our price range, as is Neil Oatley and Nick Worth. Um, also, Goto is also a little too pricey, really. Um, what to do, what to do what to do. Um, I feel that's going to be decided actually by how well negotiations go with uh, Red Bull in particular. Why don't we take a look at that situation. They are willing to talk to us for 19 million for three seasons. Yeah, put that TV advantage on there right away. Uh, we have a one season partnership deal on the table for Mugen Honda. What a Peugeot offering. Nothing so far, neither of Ford. We'll keep talking to them. Partnership deal for two seasons on the table with Bridgestone. No deal so far um, with Goodyear. I'm actually prepared to look at changing tyres year over year. Castrol are offering a one season 1.8 million deal. That's fine. We will take it. Okay, not hiring any mechanics. Um, we will take some more guys into fabrication. Uh, design and commercial are where we really need people. Uh, we'll strengthen that team. Um, I do want to replace this guy actually because he's taking seven fucking percent of our commercial budget. Um, Let's see if anyone's fired who is reasonably good. Nobody. Oh, we could take Jackie Oliver. One of the founders of Arrows. Bit of trivia for you there. Uh, is there anyone we could realistically negotiate with? Let's, let's look at you for 4%. We'll give you a bump on salary two seasons. Yeah, Fritz Kaiser, welcome to the team. That's a big deal. That's a really big deal. Uh, right, design. We do need a new designer. Um, we really do. I don't trust Mike Coughlin not to get worse. And we really need to be above two stars, ideally. Um, and it sucks testes that Mike Gascoigne has been signed by Stewart because he was clearly the best option available uh, although he was technically banned under the rules um, who isn't banned and is okay uh, the problem is like the guys on three 
three stars could go back. But actually, Davis is a good option because he's a Ferrari. And they've just taken a win. Um, we'll have to give him a significant increase. Like, I don't mind about championship budgets and race wins because we're not going to get them next year. Let's see if he'll take that on a two-season deal. No. Okay, we'll keep trying. Um, the others, I think, are a little too pricey for my... And also Goto does fit in with the Japanese flavour at the team. You have to give quite a bit of money to pull them away. Um, I'm going to try again for Osso Goto. Okay, uh, now we have to get ourselves into some sort of um, some sort of positive um, condition. We can only build three spare parts. I'm going to run the cars without uh, repairing them because we still have to save money. That's super important. Uh, we will also. Um, I need to recoup some. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave it as it is. I will leave it as it is for the moment. This 10% that are on other engine deals, I can move over to Red Bull. Um, they get a boost anyway with the TV exposure, so hopefully that works out okay. And yeah, as long as we're not testing, I think I think we're all right. I think we are all right. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to allow the drivers to be slightly more aggressive though, because maybe we can get off the back row if they're allowed to just push a teeny bit. Particularly in the car now, I, I trust uh, a little bit more than Takagi. Uh, the same tyre split, because we don't know where, the, where what the race pace is like. 27 degrees cloudy with a strong wind in Brazil. So we're back at the grid again. What's the gap? Still about a tenth off the back of the Prosts, but that's not insurmountable. Uh, Arrows don't take the front row this time. It's actually Mika Hakkinen in the Williams uh, with a 117.445 ahead of Giancarlo Fisichella and Olivier Panis. The Jordans continuing to perform strongly. Uh, McLaren take uh, fourth and fifth, Coulthard leading Deniz, and then Johnny Newhouse takes P6. 29 degrees dry with a strong wind for race day. We'll do the one-stop shuffle. I have a horrible headache today. It's been very, very hot still, and I don't like it. I know you don't care, but, you know, it's kind of nice to have a bit of a whinge every now and then, isn't it? Right. Come on, boys. Don't let me down. Yay, we finished with at least one car. Both cars finished. Congratulations. Toro Takagi bringing it home in front of the Prosts. Um, that's interesting. That just tells me he was on the right tyre and the car itself is actually faster on race pace than the Prosts. Um, just a moment. I need to take a sip of of water. Okay. So, who failed to finish? Uh, that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked, voice in my head. Uh, we lost uh, the Sauber of Rubens Barrichello with a Ferrari of Johnny Newhouse. Uh, Jan Trulli's Minardi, Fisichella's Jordan, Olivier Panis' Jordan, that's uh, a very strong qualifying screwed up for those guys, and Stefan Sarazan Stewart. Uh, meanwhile, at the sharp end, Esteban Tuero takes the win for Williams. Eddie Irvine converts a poor qualifying into a second place for the Arrows. Uh, David Coulthard rounds out your podium. Uh, Sauber in the points with Jean Lacy in P4, McLaren of Pedro Diniz in P5, and the final points. Go to Mika Hakkinen's Williams. Just outside the points, uh, Damon Hill and Mika Salo, Ferrari and Arrows, respectively. Nice job for those guys. Uh, up at the uh, top of the Drivers' Championship, it's a three-way tie for first position right now between Coulthard, Hill and Tuero, all on ten points apiece. Eddie Irvine in four with, P uh, with six points. I've forgotten how to talk today. I can't brain, guys. I'm so tired. 
Uh, in the constructors, McLaren are currently your constructors championship leaders with seven teams on the board so far, which is very, very good. Three points clear of Ferrari on 12, who in turn are one point clear of Williams. Uh, Arrows and Jordan are in fourth and fifth, but arguably should be higher. It's just been reliability that's held them back so far. Again, another fantastically healthy profit. That's superb. Two season work steal from Ford. That's a little hard to turn down. Also a two season work deal from Peugeot and a one season deal from Yugen Honda. I'm going to throw that out to you guys, to the executive board of the team. Uh, let me know what you think. Do you want to carry on with um, the Japanese flavoured playthrough? Or would you want to uh, pursue uh, a work deal somewhere else? I'm kind of tempted to stick with Yugen Honda just because it's kind of fun to have a restriction. But don't know how you guys feel watching the team on the precipice like this. Uh, we're having to be very careful with our management. Uh, otherwise, we have a one-season partnership with Goodyear or a two-season partnership with uh, Bridgestone. Uh, I think that's a bit of a no-brainer. We will be staying with Bridgestone. Uh, the Red Bull deal is complete. <laughs> Out of nowhere. Um, 19 million for three seasons. That's just completely saved the team. <laughs> Uh, smashing. Smashing. That went unnervingly well. Uh, that means I'm going to start looking at other sponsors already. Magneti Morelli are offering a two-season 1.2 million deal. That's actually really worth chasing. That's worth more to us than the Castrol deal. Um, I'm going to put 10% on... Let's find another... Let's find a Japanese-y kind of, kind of company. Um, there really aren't many, are there? And Castrol's British, to be fair, and Magneti Morelli are Italian. Maybe not. Um, maybe we'll, maybe we'll also wait on that front. Um, right. What's going on with the design? The design for next year is legal. That means the requirements have been released, so we can see if next year's car is um, is acceptable to them. Why don't we take a look? The 2000 chassis is legal, so that's good. We've got um, we've got some basics. We've got some basics down. Uh, the regulations around technology and uh, engine fuel and tyres are unclear. Um, we could still have someone new enter the sport. Um, let's check the news, shall we? See if anything... I'm just going to skip through really quick. Let's see if there's anything... Oh, our test driver, Celso Moriero, will be driving for Stewart. Um, Williams have signed Giancarlo Fisichella. Uh, McLaren are trying to pick up Damon Hill, and we've signed Fritz Kaiser. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it in terms of news. So guys, thank you for your patience while I've been absent. Um, I'm looking forward to your feedback on what we do next. And I promise you the next video will be a little less rushed and a bit more uh, me. Um, you will be getting uh, back to a regular content schedule this week. That means obviously Grand Prix World today. Uh, there'll be some Sauber playthrough uh, later in the week. And at the weekend, it's the Failcast F1 podcast plus um, more Tyrrell and Sauber time. Uh, additionally, uh, I've heard your feedback on the Banner Saga loud and clear. I'm going to um, give that some consideration. Maybe I'll keep that to Twitch because I kind of feel like I've started a lot of playthroughs and never finished them. So I'm trying to get into the habit of at least finishing them now. Um, but in lieu of the Banner Saga, uh, I'm taking a look at options for what I could um, have for those of you who are not here specifically for F1 content. And it seems to be like a 50-50 split. So I'm looking at some grand strategy options. Uh, as always, suggestions are welcome. Have just an amazing week. Um, and please do take care of yourselves. I will speak to you again in a day or two, probably. Bye for now.